When I started out making my first game, I was writing all of my text directly within my code. Maybe you're doing the same thing, and honestly, that's a mistake. You'll waste a huge amount of time later on when you want to translate your game to other languages. You'll have to track down all of your texts and write code to change it, depending on the language selected by your player, and that'll just be very annoying to fix. Fortunately, there's a better and simpler way to do it. You can spend a few minutes right now setting up your project the right way, and you'll save potentially months of efforts down the line. So let me show you how to do that. What you want to do is to have all of the text that you will need to translate later on inside of external files. Those files will be in either CSV or JSON format, and they'll be easily trickable using other tools like Google Sheets or Localizer. I personally use CSV files. Then, inside of your code base, you'll have keys that reference the actual text contained in those files. For example, you'll have a key like item underscore sword in your code, where you want to display the name of your sword item, and in your external file, you'll have the actual text, which is sword. You can have one file for each language, or just one big file with one column for each language, if you don't have too much text. I'll show you how to do it with one big file. Okay, so I created a new project with only one room, and one object. And all the object is doing is to display this text in the middle of the room. Right now, this text is written directly within my code, and the goal will be to convert it into the new translation system. So here's the content of my object. As I told you, it's only drawing this text in the draw GUI event. And the first thing we want to do is to put that text inside of an external file and replace it with the key inside the code. So to do that, you can use Google Sheets, which is what I've done. I've created a new local file with three columns. The first column contains the key of the text and the next columns will contain the translations for each language. So for me, the second column contains the English translation and the third column contains the French translation. And then from here, if you want to add more text to your game, you'll just have to add more rows with new keys and new translations, just like this. So for now, we don't need this one. Once you have all of your text inside of your file, you can just click on File, Download, and download as comma-separated values or .csv. Anytime you add a new key to your game or some new text, you have to re-download the file and re-import it into your project. But it's actually pretty fast to do. So then you'll end up with a file that looks like this which is basically the representation of your Google Sheet, but as comma separated values. So here we can see our key and our translation in English and our translation in French. So now we need to include this file within our GameMaker project. So you can close it and then you need to click on this button in the top right corner of your screen, which is the menu button and then included files. And here you will be able to see all of the files that are included in your project. I've already included the local file that we just created, but for you it will be empty. So just click open in Explorer and paste your file in this folder. Then you can close it. And then what we have to do is to retrieve our text from that file. To do that, we need to replace this with the key that we used in our file. And we'll pass this key to a function that will retrieve the correct translation for that key. I've called that function text, and we just have to pass our key as an argument, which here is recover underscore HP. So now I'm going to show you what's inside of my translation script which contains two functions, and that's all you need to make this system work. So it will be pretty fast to implement. So now we are inside of my translation script. The first thing we need to do is to create an enum, which I've called local, and then you'll, you'll create one value for every language that you're supporting in your game. Here I've put English and French, so English is going to be zero, and French is going to be one. And then I initialize the value of a global variable to our my language. This is the variable that you will change when your player is changing the language in the settings. And then I call a function that's called init translations. If I put it here in the script, it means this function will be called once at the beginning of the game. So here's what's inside that function. First of all, we need to retrieve the content of our local.csv file thanks to the load CSV function. And we put all of this into a variable. This function will transform the content of the file into a grid. So what we are going to do next is to create a map, which is a structure that allows you to link a key to a value. And we are going to go through the content of the file and add values into our map. What we are going to add are the keys of all of our text, and we are going to link them to the row number on which they are. This way, we are going to be able to use this map afterwards to get the correct translation with the raw number from a key. And then we put all of this into another variable. So all of this is done only once at the beginning of the game. We've created a variable that contains all of the content of our file, so the keys and the translations. And we've created another variable that contains only the keys and the raw numbers, which we could probably actually rename to keys, but whatever. 
And here's the second function of our script, which is text. This is the function we called in our all game object. And this is the main function that we'll use all throughout the game to display text. So anytime you want to display something, you're going to pass the key to this function and it's going to display the correct translation. So what we're doing inside of that function is we're creating an empty string and then we're checking if the translation for that for the key that we passed into the function exists. If it doesn't exist, we just display the key that we passed as an argument or you could just leave it empty. But this way it will display in the game the key that doesn't exist so you can go and fix it. And then if that key exists, we are going to retrieve. So in the variable that has all of the content of the file and this is the column that we want to get. So since column zero contains the keys we want to start at one so if we if we put one here it means we are going to get the english translation and if we put two we'll get the french translation so since this variable contains our current language and that english is equal to zero when our language is english this will be column one which is the right column in our file and if our language is french this variable's value will be one which means we are going to get the second column since we're doing one plus one so we're always going to get the right column from this. And then we get the raw number from the variable we set earlier. This is the variable that contains the map that links a key to a row. So this way we can use the key that we passed into the function to retrieve the value of the row on which the translations are. So this line of code is just retrieving the correct translation from the contents of our file. And then all you have to do is to display this text. You can ignore this for now. I'm going to talk about it in a minute. So now if we launch our game, we can see that it still displays the same thing, but this time using only the key of the text we have defined and the text function. I've also set up on my OGame object another event that will simulate the player changing the language of the game. So like I said, if you want the player to change languages, you just have to change the global.local variable. So when I press A, it will switch between French and English, and you can see that it works. So our game is now translated. Now there's a problem with that system. Imagine we want to change the balance of the game. So instead of recovering 3 HP, we want to recover 2 HP. Now we'll have to modify the number for every translation of our game. And the more languages we have, the more annoying it will be. So what we have to do is to replace the numbers in our translations with symbols like this. We usually use curly brackets like this and inside of it either ABC or 0, 1, 2, 3. And then we, we need to replace these symbols with numbers inside of the code. This way we can only modify it once and it will be updated for every language. So this is what this code does. What we're going to do is to pass an argument inside of that function, which will be the number you want to replace the symbols with. And then we just check if there's an argument. If there is, we retrieve it, else you can set the value to whatever. And then just call the function string replace all on the text with the symbol you put inside of the file and the argument as parameters. So now we have to pass an argument here, so two. And when we launch the game again, it will update the number for every language. If you don't want to pass an argument, you could also just check inside of the function which key is passed as an argument and then set the variable depending on that. My second piece of advice is to never concatenate strings like this. Because the structure of your sentence is not always going to be the same depending on your language. So instead of doing that, just write full sentences inside of your translation and have a few more keys. And the third thing that you need to be aware of is that you'll probably have to add a new range of characters to your font because by default only English characters are added even if your font supports more. So you will have to click on add new range and then you'll have to choose the range of character that you want to add into your game. So if you put for example 500 like I have, you can see below which characters that corresponds to. If you have white spaces or squares or things like that that are getting displayed in your game, it means your characters are not added to your font. And sometimes it's just that the font doesn't support some characters so you should check before using a font that it supports all of the characters that you will need for example you could use a tool like font drop which is an online tool in which you can just drop a font and it will tell you all of the characters it supports but in general you'll need at least two different fonts in your game because usually the fonts that support english or french don't also support asian characters like japanese korean or chinese so you'll need to have one font for asian characters and one font for latin characters and then you'll need to switch between them inside of your code depending on which language is selected by the player. 
I hope this was helpful. If you just spend a few minutes right now setting up your game correctly, you'll save a ton of time down the line. I've personally just finished fixing the translations for my game and it's basically been an ongoing struggle for a few months, so better avoid that if you can. Now that it's fixed, I also set up my game on Localizer, which is a website that allows you to crowdsource your translations. So if you know one of these languages and you're interested in helping me translate it, feel free to head out to the Localizer page, the link is in the description. Also subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and let me know in the comments if you have suggestions for tutorials or video ideas that you want to see. Thank you.